Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hi, my name is Dave Eisenstatter. I am the editor of the Valley Advocate. This is the Valley Advocate Podcast, our collaboration with Amherst Media. I'm here with arts and culture editor Gina Beavers. And we are here with Barb Haddon, a phenomenal artist who now lives in Greenfield, a transplant of a few years, but uh, welcome. It's great to be here. Uh, You have a show uh, at the Oxbow Gallery in here in Northampton. Um, and I got the pleasure of visiting you at the gallery as you were setting up. Um, so first, you know, I, I mean, I love talking about people's art. So um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's like, I, I love it. Um, and what I really, 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 really liked about talking to you about it yesterday was um, that you are honest. You're an honest, organic person, and your work is honest and organic as wow. well. <laughs> I, I mean, that's that was my very first first um, thought about it. Uh, and you have a really for this show. You started out as a photographer, yeah. But these shows, but you moved into painting, and of course, this show of painting. But how did you move from being a photographer, a black and white photographer, to a person who paints in full color? That's a pretty good question. I think partly about being a black and white photographer and being in a dark room in the old days, you know, (laughs) is you have emulsion, like on the film itself, there's a silver emulsion and on the paper, because I was always using um, paper paper, they call it, not the plastic resin coated. Right. So it has a certain kind of white. It has a lot of gray and a lot of black. So when you're working with it as... I guess an artist who's also kind of technically dealing with it because I didn't send my stuff out mm-hmm. to a lab, and I also worked at a lab, so I was I was actually really well trained yeah. in a in a in a lab that did headshots for actors. So we were always trying to get the exact right skin tones, and there were a lot of tricks to to uh, exposure and timing and and things. So I kind of feel like it's a it's a similar thing as painting. It's like a surface. And in photography, the way I was doing it before, there, it was an emulsion, which is like a coating of silver and, and a bunch of other chemistry that moves around in, in um, as it, light hits it. It's, it's like a, well, maybe that word organic applies in a way, even mm-hmm. though it's chemistry, science kind right. of. But it's m- also like cooking a little bit. So painting, for me, I kind of came into it. It was like I, like, I like the surface of things. I like to move around stuff and emulsion moves around paint moves around paint is a kind of emulsion right. like especially mm. oil paint yeah it's slippery and you work in oil yeah yeah and watercolor okay so there's there's so many different parallels like the the white coming through in the watercolor mm-hmm. the luminosity in a painting can can be about the the white of the panel coming through it right and a photographer in photography you're looking at a print and you want to see what you missed when you made the print you hold it up on a window and the light comes through and you can see all the gray. Right. So I think that's sort of where it is. Yeah. So you got tired there. of being in a dark room too. I huh? did. I wanted to get outside, mm. you know, just to be yeah. outside. So your paintings, I, I was looking back at your older paintings when you first started to paint. Um, it was interesting because you kind of fluctuated between some color and then there was a period of uh, not a lot of color a lot of whites and and well white yeah Yeah, all right (laughs) because you don't have to paint as much right (laughs) like i'm also a house painter Mm. right so i mean i think oddly enough or maybe not so oddly paint is paint you know and Mm. every day every day i'm i'm putting it on a wall just about i mean if i'm lucky yeah every day i'm working Mm. It gets a little slow in the winter. <laughs> but so there's a physical connection with the material right. that I don't lose touch with just because I can't paint 
that day or that week or that month i'm in the i i have that that stuff in that's, my hands that's amazing so it's so almost white like it doesn't, might be house it doesn't paint. matter that you're painting a house or you're painting like one of your paintings like you just it's feel paint. you yeah. feel like the material it's a different mindset yeah you yeah know? it's a lot scarier to um make a painting really than someone's oh. like house that might oh, be yeah. there for generations or something <laughs> or? <laughs> Look, i felt i felt her fear a lot more experience painting houses than paintings okay got it know? Unfortunately, <laughs> no, 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 not a, not a. But at um, all. yeah, it's it's uh, I don't mind house painting. I mean, it's I'm getting older. It's gonna get harder to to be hired and to do the work. Yeah. But uh, I'm gonna go as long as I can. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. That's awesome. So then, at a certain point in your work, you went from this kind of monochromatic white and and then you left right into color like kind of greens yeah. and blues oh the greens in the woods yeah, yeah a lot of greens but um even the show now the, the the one of the big differences in your show now too is that you were landscape You're doing a lot of landscape a lot of trees yeah. and this show is figures yeah people women yeah so this is something brand well, people, new people women too because when i was in art school did a lot of drawing right so we're always working with the figure, and I was much more comfortable working with the male figure. Okay. You know? Why? I just that's thought like it the was antithesis more beautiful. Wait, that's, that's like, like not, the, that's right. not okay. a common uh, thing. No, but, but I don't know. Maybe it's like a who I am. You know, I have a lot of brothers, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, I'm also a lesbian, so I always was sort of uncomfortable with how I felt myself. Like, mm -hmm. oh, why do I love this form so much? And maybe it worked too because I could separate, you know, desire from uh, right. form. Right, right, right. In a sense. Um, but now it's kind of like, oh, there's a lot out there. Like you were talking with the previous interviewer, interviewee, about, um, you know, what it's like to be a Muslim person in uh, this area. Yeah. It's like, what is it like to be a woman in this world? There's a lot, a lot more going on right now. You know, with mm -hmm. what you were saying, mm -hmm. or you were saying, the Me Too, the Women's March, you know, mm. all these things. And so, and there's more material out. There's more information out. And um, so, I think it kind of accumulated. Mm. You know, like painting is also about accumulating. Not so much photography because when you're making a painting, you just keep trying to figure it out you're trying right. to make a painting and it just the paint builds up right. so like the information has been building up about like education for for girls women daughters she was talking about it too mm. yeah um the kids you know the, the role models thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think it kind of just accumulated to a point where i was like okay this is what i'm thinking about this is like in me now whereas you know I, I'm, I'm i'm maybe because i'm getting older i'm connecting more with with myself and, and feeling more confident, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I, you know, that was terrible the way people, you know, didn't get to be literate mm. 200 right. years ago. And right. it was a big threat and people were, were murdered for, for being able to read or, or, or studying or, mm -hmm. or something like that. And how does that reflect these days, or you know, how's it how's it going? You know, yeah. And that's and that's <laughs> Title Nine. That's all. Title that's Nine all. is, I believe, is started out in the '70s around that Billie Jean King mm -hmm. tennis match. Um, so they wanted to have sort of equal access to the sports, sports programs right. and public schools and colleges, and then Barack Obama added a lot of stuff about um, protection from sexual harassment for you know men also boys and men also and for differently abled mm -hmm. you know access to sports um so it's kind of a it's kind of an important thing and i i believe i looked it up when i was writing the statement for the show mm -hmm. to, to see you know because a lot of the images come from or some of them anyway come from the title nine Nine catalog. catalog so it has like a dual meeting yeah meeting so for you. so yeah so when i first saw those catalogs, i was like wow yeah i could do a whole series of this is kind of there's like a lot of, of angles you could come at this information in this catalog from you know not i'm not going to go buy the clothes because right. they're really expensive yeah. and title <laughs> and title <laughs> nine for for anybody who doesn't know yeah. title nine is a catalog uh, uh, uh for uh women's mm -hmm. clothing and it's 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 I was describing to Davis right. it's a little cruel yeah. because you know well, you have are intimidating or intimidate, what? well it's 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 
It's my, so fake. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of oh. like these beautifully formed women yeah. in these wonderful amazing clothing clothes. and doing these amazing things yeah. that the, most of us will never get to do. I'm never mm. going to surf in mm-hmm. Spain yeah. in a, in a, a you know, beautiful uh, charcoal gray bikini with my baby, with my baby yeah. on my back <laughs> wow. and, you know, and a, and a machete so I can yeah, cut yeah, off coconut. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, and, and it's just kind of, it's, it's kind of mean, but it's it's alluring. It's because alluring. It's like, I and want it's, to be it's there. interesting because they're using that thing about like, oh, let's let's like include women. Right. In we're, we're, you can be in sports too. You can be you sold. Can, you can be, oh, like yeah. this. Oh, this like stuff. you can do. You could do this, you even though you probably you will not and this, cannot. But but you could because <laughs> you could. of you know Title Nine and right. Um, it, right. Uh, you know, all, like all inclusion. Right. Yeah. So the it's sort of sporting wear. Yeah. Yes. Kind okay. of. You know, and support bras. And, <laughs> yeah. and so you yeah. took those images, and you that that's your some of your I, inspiration. I was like, I could really make paintings out of these images because yeah. they're so iconic. Is that the word? Oh. You know, in, in, in a way, way they in are. Way they, they are. are. The yeah. striking photography is beautiful photography. Yeah, and I and I and I have always wanted to be doing things outdoors. Like the tree yeah. paintings, kind right. of was like it's great to be out in the woods all day. Right. I mean, it's amazing yeah. the kind of meditation that happens being on site and looking and painting and looking and painting nothing else is coming into your mind mm. but. that's like plain air work yeah, yeah yeah i was living on a farm in conway and there were acres of woods and i was mm. able just to wow. go up in there and and be there all day and not and just be by myself yeah you know and work but um one of the things we talked about yesterday was that you having loved the outdoors one of the things you used to do on the Appalachian Trail and you felt that you had to stop I had to stop yeah because I felt threatened Mm -hmm. you know it was threat it was hard it was I could there was only one time there was a really creepy guy following me and I would see notes you know around in the in the huts and the the outhouses I don't forget the latrines you know (laughs) and it was like oh have you seen this person and I just got really creeped out. Yeah. And, um, I'm not a very, um, you know, I, I'm not like the woman that was sitting here before. She's so courageous. She's fearless. Like, she's like, I, you know, I know that there's going to be this hate coming at, at my campaign. Mm. And I'm prepared. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I am not prepared you know mm-hmm. but for still, that kind of stuff you like hiked the apple I mean yeah, the, I mean, so I did it just to put it in a little yeah. bit of perspective yeah. I yeah. was like you know I didn't hike the Appalachian t- Trail but you no. but you I like the sections and yeah. I right. like to hike I like to be by myself you know okay. that's yeah. courageous though yeah. it is but we're, I didn't have enough to like just say oh I, I'll be fine that's because you were sane yeah <laughs> Right. Because you know that right. there have been dangerous it's like people. Miles right. Like, <laughs> I had an experience, and, and right. I couldn't and like say, "Oh, yeah. I'm prepared." I yeah. wasn't prepared. It's very and different. A, and that was a while ago, too. Like it was you, a long time ago. Like, I was you, like in my very. I think I was still in, in, you know, like twenty maybe. Do you yeah. do you think that the trail is safer now, or like I don't know, like or I think there's think, just a whole lot more people. I haven't actually. I went with my nephew and my brother. I think two falls ago, we went in Vermont near his house and um, it was really interesting actually because I was with them and then we arrived at the hut and it was raining and there were like 10 guys Mm. and they all assumed that I was a guy first Mm. so I I heard all this really awful sexual explicit talk that they were having around this fire because they assumed that I was a guy wow and then when they heard my voice, they assumed that my brother was my husband and my nephew was my son. son right. You know, so we went, th- you know, went through all this stuff. Yeah, like, ass- but I can't imagine yeah. have been arriving there on my own. Really, right? Would have been a little uncomfortable. A lot of uncomfortable. You know, I, I mean, they were all nice people in the end. You know? <laughs> in the end, but <laughs> yeah, you got know. it. Yeah, yeah. So you're kind of out there, and um, it can be scary. I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose it can be scary, you know. So you've uh, kind of um, filtered that into your paintings. Yeah. So mm. it's kind of like that's another aspect of yeah. it. I want to, you know, I want, I have wanted to be out and and doing those things. And and when I was in high school, we did rock climbing, mm-hmm. and that was so fun and caving because I was in Washington D.C. and they, West Virginia and Virginia and those parts that it's near there's a lot of that kind of stuff that you can go do and it's all really it was really beautiful 
you know, 40 years ago. Right. Hmm. And um, I don't know what it's like now. Yeah. So I always wanted to be involved in those things, but it sort of, you know, being going to art school and stuff, that sort of like goes different. Right. Mm. Right. There weren't really climbers at art school right. so much. Maybe there are now. Because now it's, Cause they it's have the like indoor bigger, yeah. stuff, and you can really, you know, you don't have to go to West Virginia. Right. You know. <laughs> to go find some rocks. Yeah, yeah, but it's almost like you're experiencing these things through your painting. Yeah, I was starting to like, think, oh, I can't really do it you know pr pragmatically it's sort of you know right. to get there and all that and to get kind of like toughen up and you know that you know maybe it's kind of okay to, to put it in a painting and, mm. in a way yeah you know and to live vicariously through your painting I think that all artists live vicariously through yeah, their paintings so. a little bit yeah you know yeah. Whether, whether or not you're creating something that you want yeah or creating or trying to um, encapsulate uh, a moment or mm -hmm. you know I think that we all do that and so at the Oxbow the gallery at the gallery your show starts on start April 5th it's yes a, today mm -hmm. yep and um, goes to it goes I believe to the 29th which is a Sunday okay. and, and this will be your last show you're a member of the Oxbow yeah. this will be your last show at the Oxbow yep I've been a member for probably 10 or 11 maybe 12 years yeah and it's a great gallery it's the room itself, the bigger room, the, there's two rooms, there's a back room and a front room. Mm -hmm. They're both really great rooms. The front room particularly um, is just, it's, it's not a really big space, but it's it, for, for what an artist would want in a gallery here in this, in this area, in the valley, I think it's, it's kind of unique because it has like, just, it's just plain. It's just these great walls, it's set up nice. It has pretty good lighting, you know, mm -hmm. and you can you can put on a really professional show if you want yeah. to, you know, if you put the energy into it. It's a co-op, so everybody is doing their oh, own. Nice. Mostly, right. there are there is committees and things that help with publicity and and stuff like that. But it's kind of your show, and you you make it what it is, mm -hmm. and the potential to make something really good is is pretty high in there, I think. Yeah, I was so. just reading about sort of the cooperative model for a different uh, business, and mm -hmm. it, like I, when it kind of, I was just wondering, being a valley artist, and there's lots of artists around here. Like, mm -hmm. how do you, like, you know, what's your, like, like how do you connect with other artists, or do you connect with other artists in the area? Well, it's kind of, I think as I get older, it's harder to connect because I want to stay in at night. Mm. A lot, you know, yeah. it's like I, it's like oh, I, don't know, I could go all the way right. down. Something you know? starts at nine o'clock. <laughs> right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get on ninety, or gotta get on, gotta get gotta get get on get five, on depending yeah. on your yeah. preference. I used to have a studio over at the um, Arts and Industry Building, and I sort of met some people that way, and that's how I got connected to the gallery. Was somebody came to open studios there and said, "Oh, you should apply to yeah. be in this co-op." So that was a, a connection, and then I also was part of a critique group at UMass at I can't remember the name of the gallery right now but it's, there's a couple of galleries there that are pretty good too I think it's um anyway I can't remember right now mm -hmm. and that ended up being a lot of women my age mm -hmm. and once I settled down and and kind of like okay this is my tribe yeah um I and I'd been doing that for like four or five years I have a, a job I have to do Sundays now it was always Sunday so I can't go to that group anymore Hmm. Um, but that was another way. So critique groups, there's some of those around. Yeah. Hmm. So that's how you would connect, aside just from going to openings and and stuff. So when so. somebody goes to the Oxbow to see your show, what can they expect? I know what to expect because I've seen it. Well, what can they uh. expect? <laughs> huh. There's not a lot of paintings right. in the show. Um, a friend of mine helped me hang it. And um, I think because I had a very short amount of time to do this work in, mm -hmm. um, I, it's really important. I think one thing about painting is it's a group effort. Hmm. It seems like it's like one person, you know, yeah, by themselves up in the, up in the like attic, that. you know. <laughs> but it's actually the whole thing about connecting, making connections, and that word networking, which I hate, you know, mm -hmm. is really important. And like, for instance, having a statement to help mm -hmm. people kind of connect with it is really important. And I think that's kind of how I got here 
was somewhat that statement because for the first time I wrote something that wasn't just about painting itself. Mm -hmm. Like I wrote something that I was thinking about because of a book I read and how I got the the name for the show, which is thoughts on the education of daughters. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a provocative. That's the name of the book. That's the name of the book, and I stole it from my show. <laughs> and the book is Creative called license. Romantic Outlaws, and I forget the author's name, but it's. Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley, the mother and the daughter, and their lives 200 years ago in England. And it was just mind blowing to me, like what was happening with them. And they were really those courageous kind of people that expect and you know violence against them and and a lot of judgmental and shaming from from the culture, the mm -hmm. community, and they could deal with it. And um, Mary Shelley, of course, went on to write Frankenstein. Right, Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. And Mary Wollstonecraft, her mom, mm -hmm. who died when Mary Shelley was born, she died giving birth mm -hmm. to, to her daughter, um, was, oh, I don't know what they are called, but she was a women's rights person from the get-go. And mm -hmm. she wrote that book, Thoughts on the Education of Daughters, and many others. Um, and she was, you know, had these really unusual sort of things at the time, like open marriage and um, literacy, mm -hmm. you know, which was like, oh, Literacy? Literacy. Right. Yeah. What? <laughs> For women? No. You know, right. so, so it was interesting to me anyway to be looking backwards more because I'm at a certain age and I'm, I'm looking at what the issues are now and I sometimes think to myself selfishly, I wish people would ask the older people more, you know, what it was like because you're yeah, we knew but then when I read that book I was like I did not ask anybody mm. who came before wow. me you know what right. it was like for them right you know so it's great to hit that book and then sort of open my my mind to 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 more um, different points of view and, and 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 what's going on now without having this kind of like I wish someone would ask me you know right but what we're happened? asking you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, curious. I mean, like, where, where do you feel like we're at now in terms of like, uh, you know, women's rights, like, uh, you know, moving towards equality and contending with Me Too, kind of over your lifetime. Like, how do you, you know, how do you feel like well, we're doing Me now? Well, the Me Too thing, I think, is really good stuff, but I really think the, um, the answers are going to be in like how you set up. Uh, work sites like hmm. for instance co-ops mm -hmm. like having cooperatively run businesses takes care of the boss there isn't someone that has all the power um, sitting there that then everyone else is afraid of so it's, it's like an automatically kind of set up situation for bad stuff to happen mm. you know and it's not just sexual harassment either I'm sure that happens um, so that's that's one thing I think if they asked me I'd say you know let's look at at how to set up work work environments that don't involve bosses that's interesting I mean that'll never happen but you know that's what I think, <laughs> well but know? it's happening in, in, in a few some, places yeah there yeah. are people that are working hard to structure those how do you do that you know how do you do that well you know for 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 a corporation or whatever or, or how does capitalism deal with co-ops hmm you know? so so that's that and um i still have a lot of things i need to learn about the sort of the gender stuff um that's a pretty interesting place to be kind of coming into yeah. as an older person as someone who I, m me personally i never felt like i was a man but i got a lot of uh feedback out there like people would treat me like i was before they would speak. Hmm. Um, it happens a lot less now that I'm older, but it, and I was I wasn't purposely making myself look a certain way. I was just trying to trying to be something out there, trying to walk around outside, you know, to be authentic, to be okay, yeah. you know. Like I don't, I can't do that. I can't, you know. It's like I can't put a dress on. Sorry, you know, <laughs> I can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that kind of stuff, and I'm sure that there's many young women or girls or whatever and boys to their side of it that have that kind of like clothing 
what would be the word like dysplasia or like uh, uh, I, I, that's so funny I heard a dis in my mind and I was yeah. like a, what would it be like a mm. dis it's not dis it's something that's euphoria. wrong it's not you know it's something that you, that people are looking at you and they're judging you and it can be scary you know and I'm sure. sure people that like especially men who are more like women there's a it's very threatening to to be different gendered or whatever or or gender neutral or um or want to identify as the opposite like gender right um i don't have all the language i haven't sure. done my training you know my research and so it is called, a lot of research yeah and it's it's a really interesting place but i do wish that there was there was already not so strict rules I mm. wish the the culture was a little looser, mm. so that people wouldn't feel like they had to like make those kind of choices. Does it yeah. seem like we're going that way or not? It doesn't. Mm. It doesn't seem like. I mean, yeah. I think there's a lot of really brave people saying, you know, I'm I'm neutral or or you know, you can, you know, I'm not going to be one or the other. And 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 then everyone that's like making these these choices and changing over, that's really scary stuff, and it's also kind of dangerous. You know, health-wise, um, so I know it's very real. Yeah, you know, it's a big, big thing. So now that you're kind of retiring from the Oxbow, mm -hmm. um, and you have these thoughts, and it sounds like you're you are very interested in educating yourself in in various things as a life student in a way. Yeah. Do you think that's going to inform your future pieces of art? Because one of the other things that I really liked about you, too, is that you were really honest about I started this piece in... 2013. Yeah, and yeah. I, yeah. Was, I had to make this work because yeah, I, yeah. Had this, I had this it's show sure. coming up, yeah. and I have to make this work somehow because I've done the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, you know, it, it's, hard, it's hard to know as an artist what your next... It is big thing is going to be, but it's, it seems like there are things that are percolating in your mind. Yeah, particularly since it's you're going to be moving from the Oxbow because that's taken up some time. Part yeah, of your time for ten yeah. years. Yeah, as I age, I need to earn more money, and I'm being I'm less able to earn more money. So I got to yeah. figure this out. Right. You know? um, so that was based only on income and um, you know what I was capable of of investing in the Oxbow with you know, money-wise and time-wise. Because now I have an extra job on Sundays, so I used to gallery sit on Sundays, so I had to switch with someone, which is fine, but now it's on a Friday, and that's a potential day to make income, and, yeah. you know. So it, it for me personally, it wasn't going to work anymore, but it worked for a long time when, yeah. I, when I was able to do it. So you think you'll paint more? Um, it's funny because it, I was so stressed out about the show because I had – so little time um, that I was like, I can't wait till this is over. I'm kind of done, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, I got your email, and and the the paintings did come together. Yeah. And the friend of mine that helped me hang them also came in a couple times and was like, Hey, here we, you know, that was the extra set of eyes that I didn't get to have because I couldn't get away from the work. Um, I started feeling a little better. Yeah. That maybe I could continue, hmm. you know. Yeah, with it somehow or other, and maybe by opening, you know, letting go of the oxbow, something else will, will kind of like. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about teaching? I have, I've been a teacher been in a teacher. my youth. Yeah. <laughs> and you moved on, or what's that? <laughs> yeah, There's no going it back. A, it was a. Uh, um, I think what happened with the teaching profession is it got really administrative, mm -hmm. um, and I yeah. kind of left before that got really hard. And I have people, I know people that are still teaching, and it's unbelievable like the rubrics mm. you know and the um the accountability and um the intense pressure from parents some people think that it's just a lot of pressure from the parents that the administration kind of like they're on that team mm -hmm. and teachers don't always get and i'm sure this is like very general i'm generalizing a lot but um for instance i have a friend that um when the last president election you know happened and i think she did something like when he was gonna like the thing with immigration mm. so she said something like and i'm not gonna have the exact you know this isn't a trial so you mm -hmm. know <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, uh, 
let's start the class off. She's an art teacher. Let's start the class off with like five minutes of like where you're from. You know, where's your family from? And um, somebody re in her class reported her, and she was, you know, over one weekend, she thought she was going to lose her job wow. mm -hmm. for doing that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So there's that too, like in this kind of climate political climate that right. we're in it's it's pretty hard to be a teacher yeah so I'm pretty okay about being out of it but if I'd stayed I'd be like okay I could retire now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right, like, yeah right 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 which is why I kind of got it to do it in the first place mm -hmm. like I got to take care of myself better right but I never did so yeah. <laughs> well something always yeah, presents some, itself yeah yeah I've been kind of lucky yeah so yeah <laughs> Yeah, great. Well, thanks for thanks coming so in. Much. Well, it's thank ours. you very it's much wonderful. for happening. I mean, yeah. happening. <laughs> <laughs> We're thank all you so happening. Much for being. We're all yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what's your website? If people oh, yeah. Right. Sure. Just my name, www.barbarahadden, H-A-D-D-E-N.com. And I'll warn you, though, I haven't updated it in a while, but you can see all the old paintings. Yes, you can. Yes, <laughs> yes you can. Thank you so much, Barb. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com.